大家好，今日呢辑节目带俾大家最娱乐、同健康于一身嘅 Kidney Cuisine Cook Off 烹调比赛。This is the Kidney Cuisine Cook Off. Participating in this showdown today, we have Yi Ji Cho. He's a Canadian film and TV actor. Our lovely judges today are Gurjeet Power. She's a registered PD or renal nurse who used to be on PD for four years. Asher Mendelson, and he is a critical care physician, PD scientist, and a clinician. Uh, what was the other one? <laughs> there's there's a few. He does lots of things. There's a lots of things. Yes. Okay. Then our first team is Chef Angeli. And she is a nephrologist, director, professor, and president of the ISPD Northern Chapter. <laughs> Next to her, we have Jeff Pearl, who's a nephrologist, and he also has lots of things behind his name. But we don't want the session to go too long. <laughs> <laughs> Then our second team is Chef Laura. She is a registered dietitian, and we have and we have Angie Chen, who is her sous chef, who is a registered dietitian. So today we have two teams of chefs. There will be one winner and 50 minutes of hardcore cooking. Today's secret ingredients are <laughs> herbs and spices. <laughs> Chefs, using these flavorful ingredients, you have 50 minutes to make two dishes. The foods that you make need to comply with the PD guidelines. You must offer a high-protein food. High and low potassium foods. They must be low in salt, not have any phosphorus additives, and must be rich in flavor. So now, teams with a creative mind and an empty stomach, I say unto you in the words of my dietitian, Allez cuisine! The uh, first thing that the chefs are doing is rushing over to get the ingredients. All right. They're rushing, they're rushing. <laughs> I hope nobody gets elbowed in the face on the way over here. This is, this is very dangerous. I'm sure we're violating some insurance thing right now. <laughs> Come on, Angie. All right, here we go. There's lots of herbs and spices here to choose from, and they've picked their weapons of choice for the day. Perfect. So on that table, there is a variety of spices. There's cinnamon, turmeric, cayenne, cumin, oregano, nutmeg, basil, cilantro, dill, just to name a few. After all, they say that variety is the spice of life. So each person's diet for PD can be very different, and the recommendations that we dietitians make will depend on the person's blood work, how much they're eating. Their beliefs about food. The main topics that we'll talk about today in Kitchen Stadium are protein, phosphorus, potassium, and sodium. Go. <laughs> As many people who are doing dialysis also have diabetes, the chefs will make their recipes appropriate for people with diabetes as well. It is very common for people who are doing PD. To have hypokalemia or low potassium, because PD removes potassium, and it often removes more potassium than hemodialysis does. Half cup servings are typically used to determine if a food is high or low in potassium. A very high potassium food has more than 350 milligrams of potassium per serving. A high potassium food. Is 201 to 350 milligrams per serving. A medium potassium food or or beverage is 101 to 200 milligrams per serving, and low potassium is less than or equal to 
100 milligrams of potassium per serving. Judge Gurjeet, what are some of the high and low potassium ingredients that you see the chefs are using today? Well, I see um, a bowl of avocados on Chef Anjali's table over there, and a whole lot of potatoes on Chef Laura's table over there, both very high in potassium. Um, some of the low potassium foods I see are the onions, the green peppers, the red peppers, and the cucumbers. Here's a little known fact about potassium as well is President of the United States, I am. Potus, I am, potassium. <laughs> A for effort. Chairman, don't quit your day job, whatever that is. <laughs> Chef Laura is preparing some potatoes. The potassium oh. content of a potato depends on how it's prepared. One medium baked potato with the skin on contains approximately 920 milligrams of potassium. Thank you. And one half cup serving of double boiled or soaked potatoes contains good. only approximately 200 milligrams of potassium. Some vegetables are lower medium potassium when they're raw and they're high, pot high potassium when they're cooked. So not everyone though on PD can unfortunately eat as much potassium as they like though. There are still some individuals who need to limit high potassium foods. Take this all with a grain of salt. Uh, I mean pepper. Chef Angeli, it looks like you've been adding bell peppers, garlic, cinnamon, turmeric, and salt. Did someone say the S word? I thought I heard the S word. I thought this would be a no-no. However, she is only adding a small amount of salt. And when you calculate the, how many milligrams of sodium there are in each serving, it's minimal. When you're doing dialysis, if you eat too much salt, this can cause high blood pressure, swelling, make you feel more thirsty, and then you drink more water, which needs to be removed with stronger PD solutions. <laughs> this serving is one six, sixth of the recipe, and that amount of sodium per each serving is 116 milligrams, which is still low in salt. That's why label reading and paying attention to the portion sizes are important. Sometimes food labels can be misleading and make it seem like the food item is low in salt because they are listing a very small serving size. Let's say there are 100 milligrams in a 10 gram uh, serving of food. But if you eat the entire bag of 100 grams, you'd be consuming 1,000 milligrams of salt. This wouldn't be low in sodium at all. It looks like Team Laura has added some chopped fresh dill, oregano, garlic, and lemon zest to the bowl to make some marinade for her chicken. Chef Anjali is making a vegetarian dish and using chickpeas. One of the things that we look at uh, with the PD diet is, is phosphorus. And it's very common for people who are doing dialysis to have high phosphorus levels. Yep. Chef Anjali is making a vegetarian dish today and it typically has more potassium and phosphorus in it compared to other meat dishes. If your kidneys aren't working well, vegetarian dishes can still be a good choice but I just recommend speaking with your dietitian about how often you can include these dishes. Chickpeas, lentils, dry beans can have a bad reputation because the amount of phosphorus they contain. But there is a difference between phosphorus that is naturally found in foods like meat, dairy, legumes, compared to phosphorus that's added into foods. Now, companies add phosphorus into food for a variety of reasons. It can be a preservative, can enhance the flavor of foods, and also help baked goods rise. The problem is, is that these phosphorus additives are extremely bioavailable, which means you absorb almost all of the phosphorus. Animal phosphorus, like meat, dairy, you absorb approximately 40 to 60% of it. Whereas plant phosphorus, you absorb about 20 to 50%. However, this, this can change when the food is processed. Chef Laura today is using fresh chicken. Fresh chicken doesn't have added phosphorus in it. If, you ch if she chose a boxed chicken from the freezer or chicken that was seasoned, then most often it has phosphorus added into it. Unfortunately, the amount of phosphorus typically indicated is not typically indicated on a Canadian food label, 
which is very common for other countries as well. You can tell if there's phosphorus added into a food by looking at the ingredient list. If there are ingredients with the letters P-H-O-S, phos in an ingredient means that phosphorus was added into the food. So this could be examples like monocalcium phosphate, pyrophosphate, phosphoric acid, just to name a few. By making more food at home and by label reading, you can cut down on the amount of phosphorus that you consume. Remember that limiting the amount of processed food you eat is recommended for everyone, not just for people who are doing dialysis. Look, look at the, the skill with which our, our master chefs are doing that. There, we're, we're, uh, we've got some guacamole going, it, it looks like right there. Um, a, a fun fact about avocados is that uh, once you peel the darker skin from, from the avocado, they are, they are green on the inside. Um, and and it, makes, it, makes preparing them, it makes preparing them that much more of an exact science. You really must be a master chef like these people to be able to prepare avocado due to that exact reason, the, the greenness of it. There is a frenzy of kidney cooking going on right now. Look Chairman. at that. If you're uh, doing dialysis and you're on PD and you're struggling with low potassium, avocado is a great way to, to increase your potassium intakes. Chef Laura is adding quite a bit of elbow grease over there to the, to the onions. We're worrying about making up our jicama salad. Just look at the way Team Anjali is developing the flavors in that pot there. You can almost see the flavors floating out of the pot. Developing flavors is, is uh, as critical as, as any Iron Chef knows. Um, the more you can develop flavors inside, uh, inside your meal there, then, then, then the more uh, flavor development you get. And, and that's, right, that's right, Chairman. We're going to be judging these chefs based on four different criteria. We're going to be judging them based on flavor, creativity, presentation. And they must comply with the PD guidelines. The most important Most important of all. of all. Team Laura, I see that you've mixed your dill and oregano in. How do you plan to balance those flavors out? I've never done that before. I plan to balance it very precariously. <laughs> <laughs> I am just sauteing the chicken for the chicken sabaki that we marinated. Mm. It's, it's masterful how she's got the, uh, the heat coming up from, from underneath the pan, and, and, and the pan is being heated up, and that heat is transferred into the chicken in, in that way that only Iron Chefs can do. It, and and you, you can see that it is really actually developing the flavor, as you say. But, but Chairman, this cooking is for everybody, so not just the Iron Chefs, but everyone here can learn to cook just as well as they can. Absolutely. Everyone who's watched this show today can do it. Because the chefs are revealing their secrets to us as we speak. Look at that. Uh, we, we have passed the 30-minute mark, folks. That means, uh, chefs, you have less than half the time remaining to complete your culinary creations. Uh, that does not mean, however, that we will accept half the tastiness. Give yourselves time to develop those flavors or risk dishonor in Kitchen Stadium today. We have something special for you folks today. This is the culinary curveball. Oh, no. <laughs> Designed to throw our chefs off balance, uh, but your flavors cannot be off balance, of course. Uh, chefs, you will need to make a flavorful beverage in addition to your two dishes. <laughs> the beverage must be low in sodium, free from phosphorus additives, and ideally low in sugar. Whatever. We are making a lemon-infused water with thyme. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and here is some thyme. We have so much. <laughs> yes. Oh. Okay, bueno. Chef Jeff, it appears thyme is on your side. <laughs> no. Okay. No, no. Ah, that's so funny. Yes. Okay. I love it. 
kidneys help to keep the right amount of fluid in our bodies. If somebody needs dialysis because their kidneys aren't working well, the amount of fluid that they drink is very important. If they drink too much fluid, it can cause things like swelling, shortness of breath, high blood pressure, and they may need to use stronger PD solutions. If they do not drink enough fluid, dehydration can become an issue, and they may feel dizzy, have muscle cramps, or other symptoms. If you are doing dialysis and you're not sure how much fluid you should be drinking each day, speak to your healthcare team about how much is a good amount for you to drink every day. Some people may think that certain foods are taboo for people who are doing dialysis, but there's only one food that I would say never ever to consume. Star fruit or carambola is the only food or beverage that would never be included in this battle. One way to recognize this fruit is that when a star fruit is cut, it is in the shape of a star. So star fruit has a neurotoxin and it is poisonous for people whose kidneys are not working well. Symptoms can include uncontrollable hiccups, confusion, vomiting, muscle weakness, seizures, coma, and even death when star fruit is ingested by somebody with kidney failure. We strongly advise that people who are doing PD or have a lower kidney function avoid consuming star fruit, its juices, and any products that have star fruit in it. So ask your dialysis team or nephrologist if you have questions about star fruit. Chef, Chef Jeff, how's, uh, are you chairing the uh, session on uh, technique failure? <laughs> what we have here is a technique failure. <laughs> I am going to plate the guacamole. And so, it's always oh. important to garnish with things that are in the ingredients. So if you've used cilantro, use cilantro as a garnish. If you've used lime, use lime as a garnish. People who are doing dialysis, they have higher needs for protein. And this is because dialysis takes out some protein. If a person does not get enough protein, they're at higher risk for malnutrition, infections, poor wound healing. So I guess maybe Jeff needs some more protein. <laughs> <laughs> and they're at a higher risk for hospital admission. Some ways to include more high protein foods, and dietitians are great for this, but just a few examples, uh, would be including a source of protein at each meal, adding tofu to smoothies, soups or a stir fry, add an extra egg to homemade French toast, pancakes or waffles, have cottage cheese with fruit at breakfast or for a snack, and adding meat or poultry to homemade salads, pasta or rice. Jill, what are your thoughts on protein supplementation? So great question. So I go with the philosophy of trying to do food first. And then if you're struggling, then we can look at things like protein powders, protein bars, and nutrition drinks. It looks like the chefs have started to plate their dishes. As we all know, presentation accounts for five points from each judge. We will be expecting only the highest caliber presentation from our chefs today. The recipes that the chefs have made here today uh, they're great options for batch cooking. I don't know about everybody else here, but there's certainly days where I do not feel like cooking. But if you're prepared and you have food in the freezer or the fridge, uh, this can help minimize the <laughs> amount of high sodium and phosphate ridden processed foods that you eat. There is uh, Chef Jeff um, lightly sprinkling on some, some more herbs and spices. Uh, as, as you know, we, we want the secret ingredient today to be uh, the primary focus of the dish. And, uh, and Jeff is ensuring that we have enough herbs and spices on the dish uh, in order to make the herbs and spices really shine. Now, if the audience will kindly imagine a large gong sound in their own minds. Uh, gong. <laughs> Our, our, our 
chefs have, have completed their, their meals. Well done, chefs. A big hand of applause for the chefs for what they've done today. It's, it's, uh, yes, it's a lot of pressure cooking in Kitchen Stadium. They've done a great job. Uh, chef, chef Anjali here, what, what have you made for us today here? So, what we have is a Moroccan chickpea stew and a guacamole. Elaborate. Can't, can't wait to try it. What was in the guacamole? The guacamole was a delicate balance between <laughs> avocados, le freshly picked lemons, Meyer lemons are the best, and no, limes, 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 <laughs> and tomato and onion, red onion. Prepare to be outstanded by our guacamole. Well, we'll see about that. And you know so. what they say, when life gives you avocados, make guacamole. <laughs> Chef Laura, delicious. can you tell us a little bit about your dish? What we made here is um, a chicken slovaki with a, a cucumber salad. And our chicken slovaki has a little bit of a twist. We wanted it to be higher potassium. So instead of putting the slovaki with uh, the typical pita, we swapped it for some roasted potatoes. So that will increase the potassium content. And the other thing we made is a carrot and jicama salad. Um, it's from Davida. Um, it's nice and refreshing and um, light, and it's perfect for warm, sunny days. joyful jumble of flavors. Would you agree? I would agree. Chicken is juicy. It's just the perfect balance of mm -hmm. sweet and savory. Fresh twist on the dill. The spices are coming out very nice. Shall we try the other dish? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have to drink the, uh, drink the water, the flavored water first. Actually, it's delicious. Refreshing. It's not very, water. Very refreshing. Mm -hmm. Presentation's fantastic. Wow. Delicious. The zesty flavor. Just the right balance, I think. <laughs> I just I just can't get enough of it. <laughs> Avocado was delicious. I thought so too. Mm -hmm. Guacamole, not avocado. Same thing. It's, it's about building it up, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. And the stations are looking... Like they've been used. Like they've been well <laughs> used. 
Oh, we're so we try their drinks. Missing the ISPD logo, I see. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Let's try not to hold it against them. <laughs> Mmm, lemon water. It's <laughs> delicious. All right. So now that the judges have had a chance to uh, to try out the food, uh, we, we do, because it's so close, I, I think the judges are having a very difficult time deciding. Is that right? I think we're just going to step off stage for one second. Oh, well, well, yes. Should we take we'll, the food with us? We'll have to deliberate. Um, I, I'm, I'm, uh, we're asking the audience to help us with the judging today. Um, by by show of how much noise you can collectively make. Um, uh, who do you think uh, should be the winners today? Um, uh, let's vote for Anjali and Jeff. And uh, now let's vote for Laura and Angie. Okay, we'll have to deliberate with the judges. Deliberate, deliberate. A lot of zesty. Lemon. Okay, the judges have spoken, and the winner is. It's a tie! Can you believe it? I guess everyone wins when the meal is kidney friendly. Oh my god. That is not a that is not even funny. That is not, not Actually funny. Asher. Asher. No. You should say that. You should say aren't that you happy you're not doing the session funny. technique failure? Then Angeli and I um, <laughs> the eggplant has 100 milligrams of potassium and the okra has 160. So the okra actually has slightly slightly more potassium. Yeah. Great. And I'm actually a member of Okra's book club. Ha uh ha. -huh. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.